All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So again, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Jody Hazekamp, and um, I work in the Office of International and Cultural Affairs here at Missouri s and um, I've been the one who's been sending you all those emails, so we're really excited to welcome you to campus this fall. Um, today, we're hosting this webinar for all of our new students coming in, just to give you an idea of what life in RALA is like, um, tell you about the atmosphere, what it's like to be an international student living in RALA, Missouri, and um, answer any questions that you have. So I brought with me many friends, invited many friends um, to help answer these questions for you. So um, as we get started, we're gonna go around and have everyone introduce themselves and say their name, um, where they're from, and what they're studying here at s &T, and then we'll get started on answering some questions. So do you wanna kick us off, Catherine? Uh -huh. Hey everyone, my name is Catherine Wenyake. I'm from Botswana. I'm a mining engineering student, PhD, uh, I also got my bachelor's from here in May 2016. Okay. My name is Abdallah Fenban. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I'm, I'm a bachelor's. Sorry about that. I muted us for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Praneet. I'm a graduate in mechanical engineering and I'm from India. And, uh, my name is Yan Wei Zhao and uh, I'm from China. My major is geophysics. And uh, I have got my bachelor up here and uh, I'm trying to get my PhD at Noel. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Deva. I'm a master's student in mechanical engineering and I'm from India. I'm Doug Roberts. I'm the university police chief. I'm not studying anything. <laughs> hey, uh, my name is Jihad. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I'm a senior student in mechanical engineering. Hi, my name is Muhammad. I'm from Yemen. I'm studying petroleum engineering as a PhD student. Good morning, everyone. Bill Elliott, Director of International Affairs. Pleasure to be with you this morning, and we're very excited to welcome you to campus in here in just a very short time. All right, so as you can see, we have a very diverse group of students and staff members here um, to help answer your questions. People from all across the world studying all different things at different levels. So um, to kind of get started, I'm going to start with asking the group a couple questions and they can just chime in and answer um, the questions. And then as you guys have questions yourself, um, please type them in the chat box and we'll be um, happy to answer them as well. So um, to start off, why don't, can someone maybe describe what the Raleigh community is like? Anyone? I think it's private because uh, when I first come here, my English is too bad and uh, the and staff in Canvas give a lot of patience and uh, it helps me a lot. Very good. So yeah, we definitely pride ourselves on trying to be as friendly as possible. Um, the Midwest, which is the region in the United States that um, Missouri is in, has a reputation for being very friendly and welcoming people. Um, anyone else have anything to add about Rob? In my case, I would, the positive side is safe. It is a very safe place. Mm to the point where sometimes, or a lot of times actually, I could I could leave my house and I can leave the door open. I mean, I've been here for like five years already and I never felt unsafe, so yeah. Very good, so that might be a good segue into, Chief Doug, do you wanna talk a little bit about some of the things that your team does to keep our campus safe? Thank you. So uh, as, as happy I am as that you're comfortable, please lock your door and shut your door. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've been the uh, university police chief here for, for two years. Uh, I retired from uh, the United States Secret Service that I, I worked there for 25, almost 26 years. Uh, so what I uh, learned in the Secret Service, I brought to the campus and uh, we've uh, added a lot of features to the campus safety and security concept to 
to make it, uh, although this is a very safe community, we've made it even, even safer. Uh, we have uh, police officers on my department uh, that are like myself in a uniform that, that are patrolling the campus uh, on foot and in vehicles uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we've recently added bicycles to our patrol. So we have uh, a lot of different ways that we get around campus. Every police officer, including myself, walks on campus uh, all day and all night. So uh, we will have a police officer on foot, uh, generally speaking, at 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, in the uh, evening hours and overnight, we have security guards and students that also supplement our police department. So they were also walking around on campus and our, our set of eyes and ears for the University Police Department. We have about 155 cameras on campus that are monitored, uh, not only by myself and the other supervisors on our, on our smartphones, but are monitored and, and observed in our University Police Department's operations room. And then we share those viewpoints with the Rolla uh, 911 call center, which is the local police dispatch area. So at any given moment, there's somebody watching practically every camera on campus. Uh, we have a safety app on our campus that we purchased that enables students to text our police department and to coordinate with other students' uh, uh, efforts. If they want to walk from one place to another, they can invite other students to virtually watch them using the GPS capabilities of the app. Uh, we have student escort services that will uh, walk students from place to place in campus if they, if they feel the need uh, at any time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we offer a lot of services that a lot of police departments don't typically offer, but, uh, but we try to bring those to this city and, and to this community. If a student needs to be jump started uh, off campus or on campus, we'll provide vehicle jump starts. Uh, we provide uh, car unlocks if you've locked your keys in your car. Uh, we will uh, go to your location in Rolla and unlock your vehicle. Uh, we will uh, provide a variety of different training opportunities to you if you want to learn uh, defense training, if you want to learn uh, CPR training, we provide those services free. Uh, we are a, a very diverse police department. Uh, we have, uh, I mentioned students that are on our department and we have international students on our department and we're trying to even add more international students on our department. Uh, it's very important that our police department is representative of our community. So we, we try to think like that. Um, we, we, are op we are available to anyone. Uh, we like to think that uh, we're very approachable. Uh, we try to engage and, and be a part of the campus community and involve ourselves in various campus organizations and groups and, and try to attend as many meetings as we possibly can. And I hope to meet you when you come down to Rolla for your campus visit. Uh, look for me, I'm, I drive the truck uh, and, and I'm pretty uh, friendly and I like to say hello to people and, and meet new students as they come to campus and, and engage with them through their, through their time on campus. So thank you for the time and, and welcome, welcome to campus. Thank you, Chief Doug. So he will be at our new international student orientation. So you'll definitely have a chance to meet him there. And like he said, he's always around campus. So um, kind of going along with the theme of safety. So these days, maybe um, on the news, there might be a lot of things that make you or your family nervous about coming to the US. Maybe one of, some of the students want to talk about like, what do you tell your friends and family back home who are worried about you studying in the U.S.? Like, what do you tell them to ensure that you're safe here? Uh, from my perspective, uh, Rolla being a university town, uh, there are cities in U.S. which have a block or two which are unsafe for many people, even the U.S. people who are original mm -hmm. over here. But for international people who are coming to Rolla, I would say Rolla is definitely safe. You can walk around any time of the day. Like, we as students, we go to the lab uh, for completing our assignments and we come out of the lab at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. So it is not to anything is nothing is there to worry about that. So Rala is definitely safe. Very good. Does anyone else have any thing that they share with their friends and family back home about the safety of Rala? <laughs> um, can, well, I say one, can I say one thing? Yeah, yeah, please. So, so the community is, is is the university community and you have a large regional hospital in this in the small town of Rolla. Uh, so you have a, a very diverse population, not only in the students that go to the university, but we have international, international professors 
and faculty, and then there's international staff at the hospital. So you have not only international students, but you have international faculty and staff at the hospital and at the university. With those international staff and faculty, they bring their children to this, to this area, and then there, there is an international nexus to the schools uh, in the area, not only the university, but in the elementary, the middle school, and the high school. So although a small community, it's a very diverse community. Uh, there's also in, in the community, you have in this small, small town of Rolla, there are four law enforcement agencies in this area that make it almost unprecedented the amount of safety and security that there is in this community. There's a police officer driving around all the time uh, and, it, and, it's, and it's a very safe community. You can view the crime statistics for this university on the university police webpage and, and also see all the other services that our department officers offers. Uh, but overall, this is a very, very safe community. I've moved my family to this community. Uh, my wife works on this campus. My daughter lives in this community with us. Uh, I wouldn't bring my family to a community that I didn't feel was safe. And I'd second that. Actually, uh, I've been here for approximately a year and a half. And I have an 11-year-old daughter and a 14-year-old daughter. And, you know, they have, they have had nothing but a, a wonderful time since they've arrived in Rama. It's uh, as someone fairly new to the area, we've been very pleased with the amenities, with the things to do, and I think many of those will carry over to your experience here as well. Very good. Thanks so much for sharing that, guys. Um, we, we have another. Oh, no, I have something. Oh, yeah, please. And uh, the idea of not feeling safe was not something I've had. Uh, and it's a, I, I, I believe it's a bad thing because when you move out of Rolla, you're in a different city, you need to feel safe. You need to know the regions where you're not supposed to go. You need to know at what time you're not supposed to go there and all this stuff. But once you are in Rolla, you don't have a time constraint. You don't have a region constraint. You can literally go to any place at any time you want. You feel pretty safe. And uh, as uh, Officer Doc said, on this end, you've got the highway patrol patrolling. And uh, in the middle, you've got the university police. And on the other side, you've got the uh, Rolla police patrol. So you've got somebody or someone around all the time. You particularly don't have to feel unsafe, but this idea of uh, uh, having the safe region th uh, throughout the community, throughout the city is fine. But once you move out of Rolla, that's when the problem starts, this I believe. But Rolla is a pretty safe place uh, as far as I know. Very good, yeah. I mean, I think it's important to remember that you know, bad things can happen anywhere and uh, even in Rala, but it, you always have to be smart and safe. But um, for the most part, our community is very safe and welcoming here. So, and I um, think that if I can mention yeah. something, we, <clears throat> we have a person on staff who, uh, whose role is to promote cultural affairs, uh, who visits local uh, libraries, high schools, grade schools, we have an annual event, Celebration of Nations, which is a, a lovely, well-attended event. I've been in international education for about 20 years. When I arrived here, everyone talked about a Celebration of Nations. I thought, well, whatever. And it, it, I, I went to it and was amazed. You know, we, we have almost 4,000 people that uh, come to, to the community, international students, everyone who takes part. And one of the reasons is because of that outreach that Richie does, the visit the schools to get kids involved in, uh, diversity issues and uh, acceptance of people from other cultures. So I think that I think that work really helps augment what we do here, and I think it helps to make Rama a very safe and, and welcoming community and the region itself in general. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we had a question from one of our participants wondering about how to get um, a student ID. So when you come arrive on campus, there's an office that you'll go to to get your student ID. So um, the international office can give you those directions and help you with that. Um, they also ask about getting a bank account. Does someone, one of the students want to share maybe some advice on setting up a bank account or how you did that when you first arrived? Can I elaborate on that? Yeah, please. So when I came here, uh, I came after opening week have started. If you guys are coming, Next, uh, in, in the fall, you guys want to attend opening week, and that will help you learn more about the, the school and the campus. And when when you come to campus, 
for international students, you have to have you have to get your student ID, a bank account, and a phone number. And you can do that when you where, during opening week when you come when you come to school. For the license or the ID card, that can be obtained later in time which you have to visit the highway patrol and, and get that. And I highly suggest that if you guys are traveling and can make it during opening week, which will start in uh, August the 12th, that you guys would come and participate in the, in the events. That way you get to learn more about the campus and where to go before the school starts. Yeah, absolutely. I would like to add something yeah. on bank account. So students who are upcoming, they can wait till international orientation because PCB will be having a table over there for setting up the bank account. If uh, you want a, a bank account apart from PCB, you can go to US Bank because it is there in different states as well and it will have you the more degree of freedom if you're traveling to some other state. Uh, but US Bank, I don't uh, think that they do come for international orientation. So you have to go over there and you have to open the account. For opening the account, all you need is your passport, visa, I-20, and the admission letter from university. Apart from that, you don't need anything in the initial days. Very good. And I think um, there's a lot of student organizations on campus that help our new students kind of get involved um, and get involved in campus, but also transition with these type of you know tasks that you have to do. Do you guys want to talk about some of the organizations that you're in that maybe help new students um, get settled in? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a member, I'm a vice president of the African Student Association. So it you don't need to be Africans. We welcome everyone to come to our society and we want to hold a, like a welcome a welcome thing sometime in August. So everyone is invited and we will be telling our new students about uh, how to settle in Rora, life in Rora and all that. Yeah, so that could be a really fun event. So once you arrive on campus, we'll be sure to help um, ASA share that information about when and where their event will be. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any other organizations they want to highlight? Yes, I would like to elaborate on the the event, there's a big event on campus called Minorama, and that's when all the camp all the campus organizations will have a showcase and the table is set for their programs, their events, and what they do. And that way you get to learn about the different campus organizations. So if you if you're interested in sports, if you're interested in theater, if you're interested in uh, joining international the International uh, Student Association and things like that. That, ca that can be found on the first Friday when school starts. Yeah, Minorama is a really fun day, so we definitely encourage all students to attend that and find some organizations to be a part of. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the Chinese Student and Scholar Association? Uh, yes, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a secretary of the Chinese, uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese Student Scholar uh, Association and uh, um, we will have a table in uh, national uh, celebration for na uh, celebration for nation, and uh, we will show uh, we will show our culture. And uh, I think uh, uh, another country will also have tables in that uh, celebration, and uh, it's a big festival in Rora, and uh, uh, welcome to enjoy us and uh, uh, and learn some culture from other countries. Um, India, uh, yeah. international student club? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm the sport coordinator of the uh, international student club. Uh, I would say international student club is the entertainment club in our <laughs> campus. Basically, uh, for, uh, most of the new international students, um, they enjoy joining the club. We have activities. We uh, we have potluck, we go to uh, um, museum parks like Six Flags. Uh, we like to get together, we like to hear from you, we like, we just like to have fun together. 
I mean, that's basically the idea of the club. Me as a sport coordinator, I organize events like volleyball, like soccer. Uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of stuff going on in our in our uh, in our organization. So I would love to see some of you whenever you guys get here, and I'll be happy to see you guys. Great, yeah. International Student Club is always doing a lot of fun things. Um, you're the former president of India Association, right? I am Deva, and I'm part of India Association. Um, any international student, if you guys have any questions, I would say the first point of contact with international affairs. Once you go to them, they will, they will point you to the right direction, and that, that's it. The, they will guide you through any process you need. If you have any, any problem with the orientation or anything with, of that sort, if you, want, or if you want to know somebody in your department, they can point you to the right person who can guide you somewhere else. So I would say international affairs is the point of contact. Yeah, we are definitely always happy to help. Um, like you said, we we might not be able to answer or have the answer to every question, but we will definitely point you in the right direction, help you get connected. Um, yeah. Mohammed, do you have any questions yeah, you want to highlight? I have just one comment. Since I tell you when you talked about the, the organization and the clubs in SNT, I would say and I would highly recommend it all the students or the international students to involve and participate in different organizations because three reasons. The first one is to improve your English language since uh, the main concern about uh, the international student, how can I improve my English uh, skills. To improve your English skills, you have to go to talk to different people, different accents. This is the, uh, your uh, great uh, chance. The second reason is to improve your leadership skills as we have seen this is student we have different students they are studying bachelor degree or master degree whatever they studying or phd degree they also have leadership skills they improve their leadership skills and the main point in your resume once you graduate from at from any university they will ask what your leadership skills or position you have from uh, your university uh, the last point i think how to make friends this is your path or your right way to go to involve with different cultures as we sit here we are from different races from different countries different languages but we are here like one team and try to help and associate you guys to come and welcome you in Rhoda. this is your golden opportunity to make friends in, in different clubs or organizations yeah that's really great advice thank you um, so we have another question um, that someone typed in about um, new international student orientation, which is on August 17th, and um, they may not be able to attend. So new international student orientation is a required event for all new incoming international students. But we realize that sometimes students might not be able to arrive in Rala that by that time, or in your case, maybe you have a conflict um, and need to attend another event in that day. So if you're not able to attend um, orientation, then it won't be a problem for new international student orientation. Um, if you miss that, then we will have a makeup session um, after the semester starts. So it'll be kind of a mini session. Um, will be held, uh, but it'll be hosted a couple different days, and you can choose to attend the one that suits best for your schedule. And that's where you'll get all the important information about maintaining your immigration status. For um, graduate students, the new um, graduate student orientation is on August 17th. So um, again, graduate studies really encourages students to attend that. But if you're not able to attend, it's it won't be a huge problem. We'll still welcome you to enroll in classes. But you'll want to be sure to get in contact with your academic advisor so you can get signed up for your classes because all students will need to meet with their academic advisor before they can enroll in classes. Um, that's not just your first semester, that's every semester that you'll be at SNT, you have to meet with your academic advisor. So, um, so before I think we talked a lot about all the different clubs that you guys are in, which I think takes up a lot of your time. But um, what are some other things that you do in Rala for fun when you're not studying? What do you do on weekends to kind of 
um, take a break from the hard courses. <laughs> you can go uh, go in Haven Center and have fun playing pool or table tennis. You have rec center as well for badminton and athletic sports. You have a football uh, soccer field. Uh, right addition to the rec center. You, uh, I guess the gym is not working right. Uh, yeah, the gym I think currently is under renovation, so, so it's getting yeah. improved. So it's not open at the moment, but it will be reopening and it will be nicer than ever. So. And there are many other uh, off-campus uh, sports activities as well, like bowling and other places where you can go around. Very good. Lots of fun things to do. Anyone else have anything to add? And there's totally in both. They have a movie screen almost every week or mm -hmm. they have some activities. So be in touch with them, they do send me regularly, you have some event of yours every week. So you don't feel left out, there are events every time. Even during the end of the semester, there are things to uh, burst your stress, there are events, there are uh, dinners to help you improve it. There are uh, sessions where uh, tutors get together and they try to get, uh, get you through the financial. So there is something or the other thing going, or going on always on time. Yeah, there's never really a dull moment. If you want to get involved in something, chances are that there, there's always something going on that you can join in. Um, another great thing about Rala is it is, um, it has a really nice, um, like, forest, kind of surrounded by forest and has a lot of fun outdoor activities like fishing and hiking. Does anyone like to go camping or participate in those type of things? Yes, I would like to say that there are some really nice places to go for hiking and camping. Uh, there are a few places like the Bear One Park, there, there's, uh, the, there's the Lane Spring Park that are close, that are relatively close to campus and you guys can go and hike and get to enjoy the, the scenery and enjoy the, the weather and enjoy the, the beautiful nature. Yeah, so I think that's one of the nicest things about Rala is the beautiful nature and outdoors. Like the air is very clean and fresh here, um, and it's a really nice atmosphere. Um, and we can have some, we have lots of parks, and we can mm -hmm. have barbecue in park, and uh, yeah. uh, we also hold a barbecue in spring, and uh, welcome to enjoy us. Okay, great. So um, CSSA is hosting a barbecue, so yeah. we'll. Be sure that all the new students can get that information and you can maybe join their party. Um, we just got another question about if there's any music clubs at s &T or any bands. So um, at s &T, there's over 200 student organizations. So um, there are ways to get involved in music. There's community bands. Um, is anyone playing any instruments or involved in anything like I can that? I can elaborate on yeah, that. Yeah, please do. Uh, so if you guys would learn more about, if you guys go to the main s &T page and find OrgSync website, if you go to orgsync.com and go under the s &T page, you can get to put your username and password in and from there you get to see all the campus organizations and for the music clubs there are choir bands, there are the orchestra bands and the, the marching band. If you guys are interested in that, you can you can all you can see all the organization camp uh, the, organiza the organizations we have on campus through OrgSync. Yeah. And if you also have a musical talent, another great way to get involved is in Celebration of Nations, the big international festival that we have. It also includes um, Celebrate Talent, which is like a talent show that we have. So if you want to get together either have an independent act or maybe get together with some friends and sing a song, play some music, do some dancing, any sort of talent that you have, that's always um, appreciated. And we have a lot of really talented students here um, at s &T, so I'm always amazed at that show for everyone. It's really a nice blending of cultures and a fun, um, a fun part of the day. So has anyone participated in Celebrate Talent before? Any dancers or singers in the room? <laughs> Maybe not here, but they're definitely out there. Um, uh, I wanted actually to mention something. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the um, like the entertainment that we have in Walla. Uh, I'm just gonna give it to you straight. Like, yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you guys 
So like you have at least an idea about Rola, you, uh, you've checked it, you've seen it, and you Googled it. It's a small town. Uh, I would say, I mean, I'm saying this because I don't want you to come here and get shocked and be like, <laughs> oh, uh, I was expecting a lot, a lot more. Uh, mainly it's a small, small town. Um, if you want, if you're looking for something to do, I would go with uh, socializing. Uh, the more you make friends, that will be the, the best way to have fun in the city. Uh, if you're looking for uh, activities to do, you would, I mean, in my case, I usually wait for like a, a long vacation so I can go and travel around, try to go to other states. Uh, during, during weekends, mainly, we just get together as friends. Um, like, try to, I mean, we play video games, soccer, volleyball, whatever we have going on, we just do it. Uh, I'd say, yeah, I'd say that that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, yes. okay. Please. Yeah, in addition to what he said, uh, Rola, the location of Rola is very significant location. I think, or I feel, is in the center of Missouri, which gives this uh, location very important point. How is that? During the weekend or any time you have uh, free time, you can drive for one hour or one hour and a half to Springfield or Columbia. Uh, or St. Louis, there is a, a big cities around us, which is very, very close from them. Or you can go visit uh, uh, Lake of Ozark, uh, which Lake of Ozark, I think, is one of the greatest lakes in the United States. And they have also caves, that I think is the number five uh, among the states. A lot of, a lot to do because the location of all, I just drive for uh, one hour or one hour and a half, you will find a lot of interesting and amazing things. Don't be just sit in your uh, apartment or your room doing nothing. Or during your, if you have just a small free time, you can, as she has said, go and golf and make some friends and socialize with them. Yeah, very good advice. Yeah, I would say also, again, uh, our town is like, uh, I'm talking about my experience. Um, if I had the choice again when I was uh, like four years ago, um, if I had to rethink it again and I had the option to go to a small town like this or go to a big a big city, I would I would actually choose this one because I would say. It is more focused in school and especially I'm talking about undergrad in that age when I was 18. Uh, I'd say like I would get uh, distracted very fast. So if I was, let's say, in, in a big city, let's say in Miami or in, uh, in Los Angeles or wherever, um, I would I would get really distracted easily because there are a lot of stuff going on. And the main target that, that I have when I came here is to, to graduate with, and to get a degree with the highest GPA possible uh, so I can go back home and uh, make my family proud, make myself proud, get a job and like everything is good. So. I would say that for, especially for undergrads, this is one of the best places you wanna, yeah, you wanna study in. It's, it's a lot of focusing in school wise. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good point there. Uh, I want to add something. Yeah, uh, please do. Because we are small town, so the daily cost is really economic as a big city. And for the rental, uh, for my apartment, I uh, we have three people, and we totally pay six six fifty per month. And if you live in like New York, uh, you will pay thousands for yeah. one person for per month. 
So it's a really big hallway. Yeah, the cost of living in Rala is very, very low, especially compared to bigger cities. Like just last weekend, I took a trip to Chicago just for fun. And it was a really good time, but I was like, dang, it's so expensive there. Even like going out to eat was much more expensive than Rala. So I think that's another great um, thing about Rala. That's okay. uh, people who are interested in outdoor activities like natural trees, biking, and hiking, they can uh, explore more on Missouri State Parks website. We have various things over there. Uh, people who want to explore more about fishing or lakes, everything is there on that website. You can just Google it and you can get more information about that. And like uh, Missouri is known for caves and natural springs, so you can even get that information over there. Yeah, there's a lot of beautiful outdoor things here in Missouri. So. And the uh, Student Union Board uh, gives out uh, equipment for camping, to raft, and uh, stuff like that. So you basically don't have to buy anything. You get everything from the resources on campus. Student Union Board always has something to give uh, to work for you. They have stuff for camping. They have stuff to uh, meet people. They have uh, movie screenings and stuff. So there is all almost every, uh, something going on every time and even if you you are something of a uh, outdoor person you got stuff to do you are, you are, a, you are a kind of indoor person you, just, you got stuff to do and even if you are uh, good at video games or, or at a particular game or something that involves playing online with, with a lot of people you can just go to the tj hall and you can just be, be with a lot of people and play at the same time so you have stuff to do all the time yeah lots of variety of things so um, we just got another question about transportation in Rala. Um, so we mentioned Rala is a small town. It's about 20,000 people. So there isn't really public transportation. There's not a metro or a bus or anything. Um, does anyone want to talk about, like, how do you get around Rala? Do you have a car? Do you walk? Do you have a bike? Uh, I would like to add on this. Uh, I stay really close to campus, so I don't need a bike or a car for that. But uh, people who stay really far from campus, uh, I would recommend getting a car because uh, in winter it becomes really tedious to walk around or go with bike from here to there. So yes, car would be beneficial uh, in the winters, but or else you can just walk around in Rola. Rola is not that big of a town. Yeah. But and most of the student community stays in the radius of one mile. Maybe. So yeah. it's not that big. So you could get around like this. And if you're worried about groceries and stuff, Walmart is exactly 1.7 miles on this side, <laughs> and uh, it's not pretty far. You could walk. And there is a service called uh, Rolla Host. It is basically a non-profit organization. They help students to go and come back. You just have to inform them to us before, and that's it. They pick you up, they drop you there, they wait for you, wait for you till you're done with shopping, and they get you back. So there is stuff like this. And uh, as it goes, not everybody has cars. Most, uh, the, but people who have cars, they do uh, try to help people who don't have them. If you have a lot of stuff to carry, yes, uh, you could just get, if you could just tell them if there is an emergency, like you have to go to the hospital, you could call them up. Or uh, it's it's a pretty, if you have to go to St. Louis and you don't have any 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 sort of uh, transportation, you could ping them and they will definitely help. So the student community is close knit. Everybody gets the idea. Everybody understands that. You are living on a low, a low profile, and you you can't actually uh, you don't have a means of transportation in the middle of the night. They do understand that point. So this this is something that you should catch on to. Yeah, there is. I, I can share my my experience with you guys. Once I moved from Texas to Rolla, I since I'm the only student from Yemen. When I moved uh, at the end of 2016, I know nothing, no one here in Rolla. But uh, I lived in the dorm of the schools. The uh, dorm of the schools they offer uh, a bus at three, I think, yeah, three thirty minutes to pick uh, the student up from minor village to the campus. This is uh, one good thing. Then the international is, is student affairs. They help me a lot. They offer two buses during the week, I think, uh, to do shopping, go to the Walmart from your place to to the Walmart or Kroger or whatever the places which they have shopping. This is the one thing. The second point is making friends, as my friend said. Uh, just ask your friend, don't be shy. I have to, I have some, I 
to carry my stuff or heavy stuff, they will offer you. They are very welcoming people help to help. And just just ask and just make friends. Then I know one friend he he insists to help me a lot. I think he offered me a ride every single day. You will not believe that every single day. Then I said, "You are not my driver." Just to help. <laughs> but he insists until I get my car. Yeah, there is very very welcome people here. Yeah. I would like to add on to that for the incoming freshmen that are. That are going to start next semester. The campus will require you to live on, in the dorms for the in the first two years, meaning that you get to live in either Thomas Jefferson Hall, Residential Commons, University Commons, or Minor Village. And all the uh, all the the ones that I mentioned above are close to campus, with the exception of Minor Village. But Minor Village does provide transportation, bus. From from the, from the from from the dorms to campus, whereas the rest you can walk to campus and for, for a few minutes. As for the for the person who asked about Maxwell Street, I would suggest that if you're gonna live there to get a, a car, because it, it would be it would be very hard to bike all the way from Maxwell Street to campus. And also, I would like to add to that for when it comes to groceries and food, that when you live on campus for the first two years, you're going to be provided with a, with a meal plan. And with that, you get to buy food from the, the campus cafeteria. And you don't have to get groceries and go to Walmart, for example, if, if you have a meal plan. If you don't have a meal plan, then you might want to go to Walmart and get a transportation. And the international office offers a bus uh, from from campus to Walmart, and they have a schedule. They have a scheduled uh, plan for that every month. So we mentioned, you guys mentioned that like maybe going shopping at Walmart is where you go to get your grocery shopping. Does anyone want to describe Walmart? Because I think it's kind of a, a kind of a crazy place, especially the first time that you go there. Walmart is like uh, whatever you need uh, for student life and like be it clothes, be it uh, grocery or be it hardware, everything, uh, hardware tools or anything related to your car as well. Everything you get in Walmart. And the plus point of Rolla is the Walmart in Rolla is open 24 7. So you can step in anytime and get whatever you want. Uh, Walmart even has a pharmacy, but yes, you need prescription over there. And uh, uh, there are some medicines which can be taken without prescription as well. So they are based in the racks uh, over there. So you can just go and grab them. So, the, way I would, uh, the way I would describe Walmart is basically a supermarket plus. Uh, it has a lot of things that you will not even expect. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they have a lot of things you can buy from there. They even have a pharmacy. Uh, they even have stuff uh, related to cars. You can even buy tires. <laughs> like a lot of things. Well, whatever you need for your your place for your car, you could just go there and buy it from there. Yeah. So um, when you guys moved here, did you have to learn how to cook or like what kind of challenges did you have with that? Uh, I can add to, I can say that uh, if you guys are living in the dorms, they will, they will have kitchen, a community kitchen that is shared by the, the entire floor that lives in, in your building. With that being said, uh, you're still going to have a chance to, to cook in it. And, and everyone is going to use it. And with that, there are some, e you can learn some easy, some easy, uh, easy cook food that you can make. For example, I make my, I can make myself omelet and fried eggs because it doesn't take that much to make. And it's, it's cheap and it's quick. That's, that's, that's just an example. And uh, some of you maybe prefer to your uh, to your hometown uh, hometown food, so it's better to learn some uh, some cooking before coming here, and you can cook by yourself. 
Yeah, so you have a, a month to have a meeting with your mom and grandma and learn how to do some cooking. Um, so when you go shopping in, at Walmart or other grocery stores in Rala, do you find that you can find the same type of food as your home country? Or where do you go to maybe get the kind of spices or type of food that you want if you want to cook some food from your home country? So there, so we have an, the international market in downtown Rala. It's called the Purest Food Market. And they provide, they have, they have their own restaurant plus a small market that provides international food and uh, all, all the way you can think of. And the restaurant offers international food as well, as well as uh, drinks and smoothies. I would like to add on this that uh, Walmart has introduced the Asian section as well. So almost every spices we get in Walmart now. Yeah, some of the organic spices are costly, but uh, the basic ingredients like uh, the chili powder, turmeric, cumin seeds, all, all these things we do get in Walmart now. So people need not worry about that. Yes, some of the things uh, which we don't get in, Purest as well as Walmart, for that we need to go to uh, downtown St. Louis and we need, we need to go to the local stores over there. Right. So there are some international, other bigger international grocery stores in St. Louis, so if you need to maybe go there there's like once one, every couple months or something. Yeah, but, I'd like yeah. to add one thing that there's one store called as Global Foods in St. Louis, which has uh, almost every country, something or the other from every country. So like all the cheese from every country, all the spices from every country. So you can do, uh, go over there uh, once you are in Rolla, uh, uh, once you get, get get a driving license or with a friend also, you can definitely, you should definitely go over there. Very good. So we had a question about if there's any malls or movie theaters in Rolla. Does anyone want to talk about this? We just have, I guess, one in Rolla <laughs> that is legal. Yeah, it's the movie theater, yeah. 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 Um, so we don't really have a big shopping mall here. Um, there are some like smaller stores that you can buy clothing at, but nothing, not a huge building full with many different things. So probably, you probably probably store by a big city. So yeah, I would. I would. Uh, oh, sorry. I would highly suggest that uh, you Google San Luis. Uh, it is a city that is. I would say it's like one hour and a half from here drive. You go there. That's like the the big city where if you wanted to go shopping, if you're looking for things to do, if you want to do anything, you would go there. They have a lot of malls, gallery and mall, and uh, just just West County. Just yeah. there you go. Some of those malls. Just Google it, and you will see everything there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have another question about um, a student who has an apartment and they're um, wanting to buy furniture for their apartment and then how they're going to get their bed and new furniture. So maybe some students who live in apartments, you could talk about how you found your furniture and how you got it there. So for the mattress, I would recommend that you can buy one on Amazon. Uh, they transfer it free of cost. Uh, the lead time will be there. And for furniture, for, for, for table for your apartment, you can grab one in Walmart. You do, uh, you also get mattress in Walmart. Uh, it's your choice and your discretion from where you want to buy. You can check out in Walmart and Amazon, check the prices, compare them, and go what is economical for you. For tables, same. But yes, I would recommend the tables in Walmart. What you get are foldable tables. In case if you're moving out from your apartment at a later stage or you're moving some, uh, to some other town, it will be helpful to get those tables from Walmart. I can, I can add to what he said that it's a really good idea to check if furniture are easy to, are very mobile. If you're going to move out of your apartment at any, any point in time, it would be very helpful that you can take your furniture with you. So if you get, for, for when it comes to a bed and a, a couch, for example, you can buy what is called a futon, which is something that I found out when I came here, which is a bed that can turn into a couch. And that can save you on a lot of space, and as well as foldable tables. And you can find that in, in Walmart, and pretty much anything you can find in Walmart, like furniture, uh, outdoor uh, items, 
and groceries, you can find everything in Walmart. There is also uh, IKEA, that is in San Luis as well. Uh, a lot of people, whenever they wanna, they're looking for furniture, they would go there and buy things. That's an option. And uh, also, there is a page. I would highly suggest that you guys uh, um, subscribe to. Yeah, uh, it's in Facebook. It is called Missouri. Uh, what is it? Rides and roommates. Yeah, Missouri rides and roommates. Uh, some people, uh, whenever they're uh, graduating, they they're gonna leave the place, so they're looking for people to buy their mattress or buy their couch or whatever you're asking for. Uh, I mean, if you're still looking for an apartment, uh, that's an option as well. Uh, if you're, I mean, what else we have? Uh, uh, and I'm like to add something on this. Uh, mm -hmm. People who are uh, not inclined towards buying a first-hand thing can also check on Salvation Army and community retail mm -hmm. stores. Uh, they do have good things for cheaper rate, uh, but yes, you have to check it and then take it. So it's a good option if you want to be on the economic side. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for those of you that live off campus in an apartment, um, could you maybe share like, how did you go about finding your apartment when you first came to Ra? Like what was the process and who did you ask for help? Uh, actually, I my first point of help was Deva himself and uh, after that, I Googled and uh, in the proximity of say, uh, the radius, I took, I took a radius. I don't remember the exact thing. I took basically, I took five minutes walking distance from the campus from my department that is Rumi Hall. And based on that, I finalized. Uh, for, for the upcoming students who are going to stay off campus, I would recommend uh, going with apartments uh, 1301 North Oak, 1706 North End, 1701, uh, and that's it. These, uh, are, these are on the economic side and max to max uh, staying in these apartments per person it will be accounting everything, accounting RMU and uh, grocery, it, uh, it will come, uh, come around $350 to $450 per month. When I looked for off-campus apartments, mm -hmm. I, went, I went to the student life office and they gave me a list of uh, contact uh, imp uh, information about the local apartment uh, owners in Rolla, as well as the uh, the investment realty uh, contact information. So investment realty is the the office where you can find apartments and and in Rolla. But if you want to look for a local, uh, a small and local uh, homeowner uh, uh, apartment owners, you can find that in the list. And they have their phone numbers, and you can call them and see about any available rooms open and how many how many beds you want. You want a single room, single bedroom. You want you want two bedrooms, and you can go from there as well. Uh, you saw us guys talking about uh, about organizations. Uh, I'd say for. Pretty much, uh, not for each country, but for a lot of countries that uh, that we have a lot of students. Let's say from uh, we have a lot of students from Saudi Arabia, from India, from China. Uh, those countries they have their own organization, and the easiest way is to communicate with the president of the organization or someone who is involved in the organization. Uh, plus for let's say this is when we talk about the majority or the big countries and when we talk about the small countries or let's say in my friend's case he's from yemen uh, we just started a program for the international student club for those students who uh, who, uh, who are like let's say there is only one person who is coming from that country uh, we're the one who is in charge of that you, you can just um, i believe you guys receive an email uh, whenever you sign up for the school and uh, there is a link and it talks about the International Student Club and you can uh, reach out to the president or the vice president or whoever is there 
and we can always help you out. We, uh, we started this program since last semester uh, and we help students with finding an apartment, uh, finishing their papers to get the license, to go to a bank, like literally from scratch. We're willing to help you to do whatever it takes just to make you guys uh, feel like comfortable and feel like home. Yeah, I think it's really great. Current students are some of your best resources. So as you're a new student, um, reach out to them. If you're not sure who to contact, ask me and I can put you in contact with all these great student organizations. So. Um, we have just about five minutes left of the webinar, so I just want to ask the group, like, is there any other, like, last-minute advice or um, words of wisdom that you'd like to share with our new incoming students? So what's the question regarding transportation of the furniture? Oh, okay. Uh, I would say that uh, you could uh, take help of Prala host again. Uh, you could ping them and... Uh, they help you move, move your uh, furniture from Walmart to your house. And close to the uh, orientation, a lot of student organization on campus become active and they all have something or other to offer you. So be in touch, check your mails, check the org sign, check MST club chat. There is something or the other thing going around if you want to move your uh, furniture from say Walmart or the Sandwich Nami. There is Rolla Host. There are there are other student organizations that have their own trucks to help you move your furniture. So you could just ask them. Just there is going to be a lot of activity close to your orientation. Just look out for that. Yeah, great. Someone advice. is asking what is the average cost per month for apartments. Uh, I'd say the average here is between three hundred to three hundred fifty. Uh, that's like the majority of the, of the students. Uh, I mean, I would, I would highly suggest that you try looking for an apartment like uh, as close as possible from campus. That will make your life way easier. Because um, mainly you have a lot of things going on like in the campus mainly, yeah. Uh, I would like to add something. Uh... Like Jody said, the words of wisdom, don't miss on the international student orientation and the graduate orientation because these two orientations make you familiar with what the campus has to offer for you. The various things uh, like uh, campus police, uh, various apps, what they have to offer, uh, the library working hours, the celebration of the International Student uh, Council, all other things, the organizations, even the minor Rama. Don't forget, uh, all, attend all these events and International orientation and grad orientation gives you an opportunity to introduce yourself to other people. Uh, for instance, in the at the end of the grad orientation, you have a game, a uh, treasure and kind of game where you get to make new friends by doing uh, playing those games. And uh, you also get to know about what the facilities you have in the library, like ed tech, uh, IT department, all those things. So definitely don't miss on those orientations and it is really helpful uh, throughout the semester. I would like to give a final reminder for everyone that uh, our opening week will start August 12th and during opening week you get to learn more about the school and you get to know uh, a little bit about, more about the campus and as, I would like to remind everyone about Minorama which will happen on the 24th of August at 11 a.m. and on that, you gotta get to learn all about the different campus organizations that we have here, and you get to learn about, and you get to communicate with uh, the clubs that you want to, to be involved in. Definitely being in an organization helped help me uh, doing well in school. If I, if I did not get involved in, in, in different clubs, I wouldn't have been to where I'm at right now. I would have done a lot worse in, in my academic performance. Um, and also, it's very important for you to be actively involved in your department. Whatever is happening in your department, different organizations that they have in the department. For example, in the mining department, we have uh, the Women in Mining Society. So it's something that can help to boost your resume. Very good. All great advice. So. 
Um, I want to just thank you all for participating today. I hope that you found this webinar helpful. Um, special thanks to all of our current students and Chief Doug and Bill who joined us. Um, we can't wait to meet you all um, in August. You all should have my email, but if not, um, please send me any questions that you have. If you want to be connected with any of the students here, um, I'll be happy to do that. And there's so many resources on campus to help you, to help you be successful students. Um, and we want to make sure that you're aware of them all. So um, again, thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you in just a few short weeks. So we will talk to you all soon. Bye. Good travels. Bye. Bye.